hi guys welcome to my channel and this is our first video tutorial and it will be about tri hybrid cross but the techniques and the methods that we are going to be discussing is not limited to tri hybrid cross you can use it to how many crosses you like so before delving in deep into the topic let us first clear up some important concepts and these are the product rule and sum rule product rule is used when we want to know the probability of two independent events happening for example when we want to roll two dice simultaneously uh, what is the probability of getting a six and then a one to get this we will multiply the probability of getting a six which is one over six to the probability of getting a one which is also one over six which would get us 1 over 36. Some rule on the other hand uh, is used when we want to know the probability of either of the two events, either or happening. For example, what is the probability of getting either a 6 or a 1 if you roll a die? To get this, we will add the probability of getting a 6 and the probability of getting a 1, which will get us 2 over 6 or 1 third. Th since those uh, concepts are now cleared up, we can now proceed to the question. When an individual with, hom with the genotype homozygous dominant A, heterozygous B, heterozygous C is crossed with an individual with homozygous recessive A, heterozygous B, and heterozygous C, what will be the probability of having an offspring with the genotype of heterozygous A, heterozygous B, and homozygous recessive C? These types of questions are the most probable questions that will pop up in your exams. But you might have already learned how to solve this, but it would be using the big Punnett square with all the probable combination of gametes. This, uh, there's nothing wrong with it, but it can be a tedious task especially when you're on a time constraint so this would be some kind of a shortcut but before we can use this technique properly we should first be familiar with the ratios of monohybrid crosses take note of solving the phenotypes has the same concept but uses different ratios uh, we can treat the cross between the each trait as independent events and we can use the product rule. Just like here in the first column, a cross between homozygous dominant and recessive would have a 100% chance of having a heterozygous offspring. That would be 1, a genotypic ratio of 1, and a phenotypic ratio of 1. A cross between homozygous dominant and a heterozygous individual would have a 50% chance of having a homozygous dominant and another 50% chance of getting a heterozygous offspring. But the phenotype would all express the dominant allele. So the genotypic ratio would be 2 is to 2 and the phenotypic ratio will be 1. On the other hand, the same concept goes with a cross of homozygous recessive and a heterozygous individual which would have a 50-50 a chance where the 50% has a heterozygous offspring and another 50% for a homozygous recessive. But the phenotypic ratio is different. There would be 2 is to 2 as 2 of them would express the recessive allele while the other 2 will express the dominant allele. And lastly, while a cross between two heterozygous individuals would have a 25% chance of having a homozygous dominant, a 50% chance of having a heterozygous offspring, and another 25% chance of having a homozygous recessive offspring. So the genotypic ratio would be 1 is to 2 is to 1, but the phenotypic ratio would have a 3 is to 1 ratio as 3 of them 
would express the dominant allele and the other one would express the recessive allele. Now going back to the question, we can solve this by just knowing the genotypic ratios of the monohybrid crosses without the fancy Punnett squares and all the combinations of gametes. As mentioned earlier, we can treat the cross at, of each trait as independent events. Let us look first at letter A. The first trait, uh, which is a cross between big A, big A, and small A, small A. From earlier, we know that the genotypic ratio here is 1, and all of them are heterozygous. And what are we looking for? A heterozygous offspring. So, we would jot down 100% or 4 over 4. Now, let us proceed to the next trait. Now, a cross between two heterozygotes. But now we are looking for an, a heterozygote offspring. From what we know, the cross between two heterozygotes, it will have a 1 is to 2 is to 1 ratio where 2 would be the heterozygote offspring. So we would put it here, 2 over 4 or 50%. Now, on to the last trait, C, which is also a cross between two heterozygotes. But now we are looking for a homozygous recessive offspring. From what we know, that would be 1 out of 4 chances. So that's 1 over 4 or 25%. So let us put 1 over 4. Now we can just multiply them all together to get the probability of having an offspring with this genotype. So 4 times 2 is 8 times 1, that's still 8, over 4 cubed, that's 64, or 1 over 8, or 12.5%. And that would be the probability of having an offspring having this genotype. Now let us proceed to another question, but now we are now dealing with phenotype type. Just like what we did earlier, we just need to know the phenotypic ratio because we are now dealing with the phenotype. The cross is still, the parents are still the, the same for the cross, but now we are looking for an offspring having all dominant phenotype. Okay, let us first look at the first trait. From what we said earlier, all of them are the same having the heterozygous and all of them will express the dominant phenotype. So let us put 4 over 4 to represent 100% multiplied by a cross between two heterozygotes. From what we know, the phenotypic ratio of two heterozygote cross is 3 is to 1. So let us put 3 is 3 over 4 to represent 75%. And multiply that again for the last cross, which is a cross of another two heterozygotes. So that would also be, so that will be another 3 over 4. So we can just multiply them all together. 4 times 3, that's 12 times 3, that's 36. Over 4 times 4 times 4, that's 64. Or 9 over 16. Or 56.25%. I hope you get the technique and you can apply all of what you learned to your next exams. Good luck.